and I'm here and I saw something that I don't see at every convention. This is the RPG bus and the RPG trailer. I am here with Hawk, and so Hawk, can you tell us about this? Yes, uh, these are both wheelchair accessible mobile facilities so that we're able to accommodate people in underserved and unserved locations throughout the country and bring gaming to them or come to conventions that don't have good accessibility and provide accessible gaming. Uh, not only you know, does it take into account wheelchair accessibility, we work with people in the deaf and hard of hearing community, visually impaired, we work with a lot of special needs populations, muscular dystrophy, brain injury, at-risk youth, autism spectrum from two and a half years old up to 90 plus years old, uh, all sorts of different needs, mental health, etc. So he has a table down here, which, let's go down to the table, and he has some specialized equipment that he uses to work with people in a gaming format. So one of the questions I know many gamers are going to ask is, do you only run ADMD? No, no, not at all. Uh, we run a whole slew of games since day one, original D&D forward. Uh, our most common ones right now are No Thank You Evil, which is from about ages five on up. Uh, the One Ring role-playing game and also Adventures in Middle Earth, which is the One Ring role-playing game on top of D&D 5th edition. But it uses most of the tour stuff on top of it, which is great behavioral modification because it has shadow points and inspiration and things like that. And also fellowship focus and house rules are being on tour. Uh, Star Wars a role-playing game, also because it has, you know, the dark side and such. So it, it helps encourage heroic play, behavior modification and such. Um, we're also looking at different superhero games. We're looking at uh, police procedural games. Uh, right now I'm looking at doing an adaptation of Doctor Who where the players come in, they don't know they're playing Doctor Who. Ah. They're just here, a situation happens, it looks like a police procedural or local neighborhood mystery, what have you. Now, of course, it's a spoiler. And uh, they don't realize, and then they walk into something, and all of a sudden it's larger on the inside and outside. They don't know, right? So we, we, we have a whole slew of games. Uh, if you ever get to come to the studio, you will see shelves and shelves of games. We're always evaluating new games. Uh, pretty much uh, every other week is game training day for our volunteer staff, and we encourage them to bring in new games and try them out. So almost every week there's a new game, and then we evaluate whether it makes sense to incorporate it for different populations. And we're, we're pretty specific about this game's best for this population, this for this one. Speaking of which, could you show us the uh the musical. Oh, the uh, yeah, the Boomwhackers. So these are called Boomwhackers. So, so in addition to role-playing gaming, so I'll tell you about them. I'm a recreational, the Washington State Registered uh, Department of Health and Recreational Therapist. And um, also we do music and other activities because of the, the power of music and also it's great for cooperative, working together, problem solving, if you will, mm -hmm. following directions. So we do drum circles, etc. And one of the instruments is a boom whacker. And these are tuned tubes. They're fairly inexpensive. They can take a beating, and you hit them wherever you want, and they're each tuned a different note. And so, you know, we did this a little bit earlier. You can, uh, So you can have a bunch of kids or adults lined up, each with different ones, and see quite a few of them, and you can conduct, and you can be conducting multiples, and you can have a group over here playing and counterpoint and do all sorts of great stuff with them. If you look on YouTube, there's some incredible compositions using boom records. And these are just, as I said, we have enough uh, drums, like uh, djembes and everything, for about 50 people, not counting the boom records. Um, so sometimes we use those as warm-ups for our LARPs and some of the tabletop. You know, you bring in a bunch of strangers, they don't know each other. Music is a universal language, and so people will come in and kind of do that, kind of, you know, an icebreaker, loosen things up, and they learn to follow directions and take turns. And then we'll transition them, and sometimes we tie it into the adventure. For example, uh, one of the ones we did at the Muscle History Association last year for summer camp is uh, they came into a drum circle with the summoning for a big celebration for uh, uh, a party that was happening in the village. And then, of course, stuff happens and they have to go on an adventure. Uh, so we tie it in frequently. Also, I'm a musician and we compose ah. ambient music and uh, do live music performances as part of some of my So, this trailer, yes. this is unique. 
And you said this is the prototype? This is just a prototype of what we have, the ideal trailer we have in mind. So let's, uh, let's move around here to the back. Sure. So the I'm goal, so right? This is this is it. Yeah. So basically, these both this and the bus are mobile game rooms, you know, on wheels that we can take to any location. We can go to a convention location. We go out into the boonies down dirt roads to rural cabins in the middle of nowhere. We take them to parks like Larch are often out in the middle of the countryside. We do training retreats with our staff so that we'll do you know a day or two or three of everybody taking turns GMing for four hours and getting feedback to become better GMs. Um, we're getting ready to do like RPG parties where we can show up in front of somebody's house and you know the kids come on out and have an RPG party for three four hours. Uh, so just a whole and right now we circuit around the Northwest: Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana. Uh, end of August, I'm going all the way down through to San Diego, then over to Tucson, and then up through Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and back the last three weeks of August. So I gotta ask, can we bring the camera in and look behind the curtain? Sure, you bet. So I'm gonna go up this wheelchair so, accessible ramp. Yep. And again, this is a prototype. The ideal version has a lower ride height and doesn't need the ramp extension. It just deploys and it's wheelchair accessible. Come on up here, cameraman. Oh, what do we have here? We have a jam. I am the jam, yes. John Wilker, uh, Vice President of RPG Research and Primary Dungeon Master for On the Road Shows. Look at these facilities. I mean, chairs, you get a table, that folds down. Right, so we can up. flip these out of the way for wheelchairs. So, you know, or bring them down to seat, generally three on each side. They're very comfortable. Yeah, have, have a seat. These are very nice, comfortable chairs. Um, we're planning to get the table ceiling mounted so that it'll get up out of the way. Oh, yeah. Seat. But feel very comfy seating. Yeah, this is great. That's the kind of padding I want to get in the bus uh, seating as well. And you currently have a, uh, people can donate on... Uh, so, for our general day-to-day -day operations for RPG Research, for all the charitable services and the... Re so, RPG Research is a 501c3 nonprofit charitable organization for research and human services and community services. So, to donate for our day-to-day -day operations, you can go to patreon.com forward slash RPG Research. Or, if you don't like Patreon because of what happened back in November, you want to just do it through PayPal, you can either subscribe or one-time payment. Go to rpgresearch.com forward slash do donate and you'll see there a whole bunch of donation options or if you want to help us so as I said this is the prototype this will seat up to three wheelchairs and it takes us a while to deploy the ideal version we can is a rapid deployment and will seat six to eight wheelchairs with a wheelchair accessible bathroom and that will have also slide out walls so it'll be more spacious it's about fifty thousand dollars it's custom built it's from a company that specializes in wheelchair accessible toy haulers and RVs down in Arizona and you can donate there at gofundme.com forward slash RPG trailer. So, if you're a dad, and I'm a dad, and you go to conventions, um, if you have a child or one of the members of your family have a disability, that does not rule them out from going to the convention. You look at a convention like Spokon, even their game day, it's accessible. It is totally accessible to come, to play, enjoy yourself here at the convention. So thank you for your thank time. You. you bet. All right.